All right, so for today, we're going to go ahead and start implementing Perlin worms. And what these worms will do is that they will generate rivers underneath them uh, where their path goes. So the entire idea of a Perlin worm is that you have a worm that starts at a location uh, with a given direction. And then depending on the Perlin noise, it modifies the direction in which it's going. This behavior can be really useful for generating stuff like caves in three dimensions, or in this case, uh, generating this uh, worm in two dimensions. And what's nice is that you only need one sort of value uh, in order to get the expected change out. So in two dimensions, you can just use radial coordinates. So you just give a single angle and you can figure that out. And then in three dimensions, even though you can do three angles, you can do the pitch, the yaw, and the tilt, uh, you wouldn't really want to do the tilt because til tilting a worm does nothing. So you only need two bits of information. So in the two uses in which we're going to be using Perlin noises, I mean Perlin worms, it's going to be useful. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So to determine if it spawns, we want to do something uh, like a hashing function. And this will run way faster than like manually calling noise to figure it out. And it will happen at a random location. So this iterates through the number of chunks that we have. We have an eight by eight array of chunks and determines whether a worm will spawn in this chunk. So we can go ahead and create a uint int underscore t. And this will be our hash result. And we will do that as a static cast up to uint 8t. So we're going to cut off data. And then inside of here, we can go ahead and do something more interesting. Uh, we could do something like x plus the seed location bit shifted right by the y. Uh, this is a reasonably performant algorithm. And then modulus 255 so that will fit within the static cast for the int. We actually don't need the modulus. We can actually go ahead and just use the straight up cast here and it will just take the last couple of bits. So now we have to determine if it spawns. So if hash result is greater than or equal to, I don't know, about half, then we'll do continue. So it's like a 50%, not quite, chance that uh, there will be a river that spawns in this uh, chunk. So then we'll have to figure out where it's going to spawn. So let's do an int 16t for the worm head x, and then set that equal to x times 16 for chunk, plus the result uh, mod 16. And that would be one way to do that. And int 16 t worm head y equals y times 16 plus res times y mod 16. Res times y and then mod 16 output. This creates a general uh, sort of worm location. And the last part we need is the head rotation. So we'll do generate noise worm head x and worm head y. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and multiply this by 360 to map this to, from zero to 360 degrees. Now let's go ahead and create an integer for the, actually we can just use u into 8t for the maximum number of runs that we want to do. In this case, let's do 64 runs. So this method may run up to 64 times. So runs equals zero. Runs equals the max runs. And runs equals plus. Um, so we're going to check that it doesn't like go out of bounds or if it goes uh, like into an ocean or something. We don't waste time uh, generating it. So index is ocean or index equals river then we can go ahead and break out. Additionally, if the worm head X is less than zero, or worm head Y is less than zero, or worm head X is greater than or equal to 128, or worm head Y is greater than or equal to 128, this would also be break because it's out of bounds. So 
if all that succeeds, then biomap at index is then equal to biome underscore river. Now we can go ahead and uh, modify the rotation. So float, uh, let's do a temporary variable x is stochast float of worm head x times 8.0. Then same thing happens here for Y. Let's go ahead and then do the worm head rotation is plus equals generate uh, noise temp X temp Y. And then we would multiply that by, or actually, sorry, let's subtract 0 0.5 F first because it's zero to negative one. So then that times about 120 degrees. And you can go 60 degrees in either direction. So then from here, what we want to do is actually move the worm head itself. Um, so that will be dependent upon the rotation. So let's go ahead and create a separate method for that. All right, so we created a method here for stepping in a direction. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and do step in direction for worm head X, worm head Y, and then give it the rotation value. So worm head rotation. And then this will step it into the direction. So in here, we're going to do an if for every single rotation value and iterate through it for everything. All right, and there we go. So this method just goes ahead and increments based upon what degree it is. It's not really the prettiest code, but it does the job. And I'll go ahead and write a screenshot. If we go ahead and look at it, you can see that our little worms have actually formed uh, across different locations here. And it's ended up creating these nice little paths that you can see that all around. So this is extensible and changeable. So if we were to go ahead and increase the number of runs, so if we went to like 128, uh, and then we did make and reset, we end up getting these very, very long rivers that go across and do these crazy bends. Uh, and then that's, uh, that creates this nice uh, looking long rivers that we see here. If we change different values, like the noise sampling value, uh, this changes the frequency and this would actually make it, uh, if we went higher, this would actually create uh, more and more bends. If we went lower, this would actually create less bends. Similarly, if we change the value of rotation, it may rotate more or less, uh, causing more and less changes to be made along the way. Uh, at some point, if the river decides to cross itself, as we've uh, created up here, it will end up going ahead and destroying itself. So you don't really want that to happen. You want the river to be nice and take its time. Uh, so you want it to wind through and not intersect with itself, which creates these long flowing streams, as you can see in the test uh, file over here. And that's really it for today. This has been a really fun uh, thing to work on. It took quite a while for me to actually figure out uh, how Pearl and Worms were even supposed to work, given how little information there is. Given that, I've actually created a blog post at my new website, which you can find in the description. This post sort of outlines the code and how it should look. So now that this is done, the question really goes on to be, uh, what can we do? How can we... Uh, extend this. So extending into the third dimension would be very interesting. And the first thing I want to actually conquer is fill, is data fill, because one of the issues with uh, height map generation like this is that, okay, we've generated the heights, now what? Uh, so like now what do we want to do? Uh, and that's actually a really hard question to answer. Um, what should happen and what does happen is different. So we basically have to create a 3D top-down view where, so with filling data, that's actually a really complicated topic uh, because there's so many different ways you can really optimize it beyond just iterating through a loop. Uh, the way in which you do that and the ways in which you manipulate the data are different and it can cause different things to happen. There are many different ways to quote unquote optimize this and we'll be trying tomorrow to get the most optimal method to go ahead and write uh, every single chunk here. This includes different sort of hacks like uh, extensible uh, sizes for your chunks and things like that. 
and we'll be seeing how we can go ahead and implement this.